Okay, so it's been a long time since I did a vlog type of video, but let's do it. So I'm holding the camera. I've been using these little speakers here. You guys may be familiar with these. These are the donor speakers that look like clip speakers. If you remember, I did a little video of them and uh, assessed them, and then I painted them white because I've been using them as my surround bat speakers for a while, um, for a good couple of months now. But I finally went ahead and bought some dedicated Kef speakers to do that with. If you guys are familiar, please forgive me with the room. We are doing a lot of projects right now. We are making an epoxy style desk. We're getting rid of my old desk. We've moved some subs around, adding speakers. So we're under construction right now. So please forgive the mess. But I finally got myself some speakers. And as you guys can see, they are the Q50As. Now, there are two reasons why I chose the Q50As. They're gonna be my surround back speakers. And if, if you know my setup, you know that there's not much room in this room. So I like having Dolby Atmos enabled speakers as my surround sound speakers because I can mount them against the wall and they'll sit flat. I love it. I did it when I had my Canton set up. We're doing it again with the Kef set up. So that's the one reason why I chose the Q50As. Now you may be saying, wait a minute, you have the R11 system. You have the Kef R series. Why are you getting Q50As? Well, I did a lot of research before buying these. The Q50As are largely the same as the R series. They're very, 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 very similar, but they're double the price. And the R series is discontinued for the new metas, and I'm, I'm not spending money for the metas. I don't have the R11 metas. I have the original, um, the, the original speaker. So I went with the Q50s because they will sound very, very similar to the rest of the system, and because they sit flat on the back of the wall, and they're half the price of the R. So they're gonna take place of this speaker here. We're gonna finally get rid of these things. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. I don't need them at all. So I don't know if, what I'm gonna do with them, but they're gonna be replaced by the Kef Q50. So let's go ahead and get them unboxed and show you guys what's inside. All right, so we are unboxing the Q50As. Now, like I said, these are Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. So these are meant to either be sitting on top of your speakers and pointing upwards towards the ceiling, or you're supposed to mount them high on the wall or even sometimes on the ceiling. But I'm gonna use these as dedicated surround speakers because of their orientation. They sit flat against the wall, so I don't have to worry about space. They have a keyhole type of system on the back, which I'll just up with this one right here. It has a keyhole on the back so that I and able to hang them on the wall. If you guys can kind of see right there, there's some keyhole mounts here. Just hang it on the wall and it'll do just fine. You may want to find a stud in the wall, but I don't think you'll need a screw that big. So they should hang pretty much anywhere I want them to, which is just behind the listening position. And then they have binding posts on the top of the speaker here so that I can route my wires accordingly. So that's what it looks like here. It's not the same glossy finish as what I have for the rest of the speakers, but it is white and that's all that I cared about. That's one of the big differences is the material. It's like a wrapped vinyl versus glossy finish on the rest of my speakers, but I'm not too worried about that. So here's a little bit better of a look there. See, same Uni-Q driver array, just like that's in all of the other Kef speakers in my system. My system has the Kef R11s, the R2C center channel, and then I have the bookshelves, the R3s. This shares that same kind of design. And so it should have really close timbre matching um, with the rest of the lineup. And so these are gonna sit in the back and perform as my surround back duties. And I really like these for surrounds in general. If you guys were wondering if Atmos speakers will do well for surround speakers, I highly think that they will. Um, so if you are conservative on space or you just want a cleaner, more flush look, there's are, there, I think every manufacturer now has an Atmos speaker to match their system. I do recommend them for Atmos speakers, of course, like, like intended, but they are great for hanging on the wall for surround sound speakers. Now, I'm gonna lightly put this on the back again. There's that keyhole there on the back and then there's your binding post here right there so you have a positive and negative that you can choose to use um, with either binding or excuse me with banana plugs or with wire itself and then you guys have noticed there is no port on this speaker which is ideal because since i will be putting this against the wall i won't have any boundary gain issues i won't have a bloated muffled sound so this will literally serve a perfect purpose for me so I'm gonna go ahead and get this hung on the wall and kind of show you guys what it looks like in its final application. 
So a lot of these speakers don't come with templates to get them mounted on the wall to make sure that your screws are equally spaced apart and at the right height. So of course you can measure it out and try to make sure you're as humanly accurate as possible. But what I like to do, usually the mounts on back of backs of speakers can come out and these are held in by just many, many screws right here. So I like to take these out, right? And I'll take them on a, the wall. I've already measured how tall I want my speaker to be, how high and where I want it to be positioned. So what I can do to make sure that I put both of them where I want to, I'll just put one here and then I'll take the other one off and I'll do the same thing. I'll make sure that I know my spacing, right? So I can leave this one on here if I want to and kind of retrofit it. Or I can take both of these and make sure that they're the same height measure. It's just a lot easier because if I try to grab this speaker here and try to hold it against the wall and measure and whatever, a little bit harder. So what I do is take off these and then stick them into the wall, make sure that they're measured right. And then once they're the same, I know that I can take them off and screw them back in and we're good to go. So that's what I'm going to do is take these off and measure it that way. It's just a little bit easier. All right. So we got one of them up already and I'll just demonstrate this. So Here's what it looks like on the wall, and I, re I have it a little bit higher up for a reason, um, because mostly this is really tall, and so I have it a little bit higher than that. Now, I may change this. I may move it over and move it down a little bit, um, but it's not too much past ear level. The reason why I have it so high is because they do have a downwards angle, which is why I really like them for surround sound. You can put them up a little bit higher and angle them down. You can do the same thing for side surrounds or whatever. Um, but I like it up here so that when I'm sitting down, it is fired towards where my ear is. I actually, it's really close to ear level as it is a little bit higher and that angle down will point it more towards my ear. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I like it here. Now, I don't like that the binding posts are on the top because you'll see your wires, but I do have wire tracks to hide that. So we'll put a track here and, and route it so it looks nice and clean, goes down uh, behind the chairs, you'll never see it. So that's what is it's going to do. That's what purpose I want this to serve. All right, so we have both of them up. I'll get some wire tracks to hide that there, but this should work perfectly. I like it. I just turned on some audio on the screen here to work. just to check and make sure they're working. And we got sound in the left one, and let's check the right side. We got sound in the right side. So we're pretty good to go. There's an example of it with the grill on and it just clears my seat. I can lay this flat and not have a problem with knocking it off or rubbing against it, anything like that. So should serve its purpose well. So this is gonna be my final speaker in the system for a while as far as my KEF goes. I am so happy to finally have a full KEF system. Get rid of these, these literally are $60. <laughs> And so having a system like this with all these expensive speakers, having a $60 speaker is terrible. Finally have something that matches the rest and I'm super excited to watch the movies, especially because now they're elevated. I can hear both left and right now. So it should help enhance my movie watching experience. And uh, I think they look good. There's only one thing left to do. Let's see if I can't grab that. Boom. We got one more. Take the grill off. These are magnetic, so that is pretty nice. Take off the film here. There we are. Got it. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Just a quick video. I will be doing a demo of the room soon. I haven't done a home theater demo for you guys in a long time. Um, so, uh, it is well overdue to give you guys a little demo of it just because I know YouTube doesn't do great with demos, but it is fun to kind of watch people's systems. So I will do that for you guys, but leave me a comment down below and let me know, have you heard the R model of these? These are the Q50As. You can get the R8As, which are just like these, but from the R line. If you've heard them, which one did you like best? Did I make a bad decision in getting these over the R's? Let me know that down below in the comment section. Hit that like button, subscribe if you are not already, and we will see you in the next video. K-Base Guy out. Peace.